I wanted to take just a little bit of time in this video to talk about what we mean when we talk about reaction mechanisms. There's the kind of textbook definition of what a reaction mechanism is as a sequence of elementary steps leading from the reactants to the products, but that says very little about how reaction mechanisms are actually elucidated, supported, and really buttressed with experimental evidence. And so we're going to touch on that in, in this video, a general process for working from, first of all, prior work, prior knowledge about how molecules behave in general, and experimental data toward a mechanism. And mechanisms are always provisional and always evolving. And that's an important point of this video as well, that we can think about mechanisms kind of from different levels, different perspectives, and as more precise or newer types of data come in, we may need to revise our provisional estimate of what the mechanism looks like. So before we get into the chemistry, I wanted to draw an analogy of a reaction mechanism to the mechanism of a machine. On the slide here is an image of an internal combustion engine, a figure showing the operation of a, and components of a, an internal combustion engine. And to understand the mechanism of an internal combustion engine, we ask ourselves and answer a few key questions about the construction of this device. So firstly, what are the parts? What is it made of? And what are the functions of each of those parts? In executing their functions, how do those parts interact with each other? You know, how does the piston interact with the cylinder? How do the valves interact with the piston? How does the timing work? Things like this. And then from those, we can get an idea of how the machine operates, how it will respond to various changes and conditions. You know, for example, if we change the air-fuel mixture in some way, how the engine will respond. And that's part of the reason we think about the mechanism in the first place, is to answer those kinds of questions where we need to make a prediction about what happens when we make a change. As those questions become more complicated, we may need to ask ourselves this third question. Do we understand the mechanism of this machine at an adequate level to predict and explain its operation on the level we need? And the key words here are really predict and explain. Can we answer those questions that we have about how this machine works or how we want to improve it, for example, at an adequate level based on our current understanding. And if not, we need to do mechanistic experiments or some more thinking about how we would expect these parts to operate to really unpack the mechanism on a deeper level. The same three questions apply when we talk about thinking through reaction mechanisms. But of course now the parts are the reactants, intermediates, and products. The way they interact are the elementary steps occurring within the mechanism, and the precision of our understanding relates to how much we know about the details of each elementary step that takes place. And in some cases, just the number of elementary steps that occurs. It may be, for example, that we think of a step as elementary that is actually not. So in terms of the parts, in a photochemical mechanism, there will always be at least one excited state along the reaction path. We're interested in the nature of that excited state, the structures of any intermediates, as well as the products. When we talk about structure, we're interested in constitution, how things are connected, and configuration, the three-dimensional structure. We're also interested in spin multiplicity of the excited state. Is it a singlet or triplet? In terms of the interactions, what are the rate constants and efficiencies of each step in the mechanism? And for photochemical processes, efficiency is particularly important. How does the efficiency of this step compare to, for example, unimolecular photophysical transitions, like internal conversion or intersystem crossing? And it's true in the case of the internal combustion engine also, honestly, but particularly when we're talking about molecules, which we cannot actually see, right? We can't reach out and touch, pick up a molecule it is key for us to rely on precedent, prior work, to give us an idea of how to get the process started of thinking about how a reaction mechanism takes place. We want to draw analogies to things we've seen already just to start the conversation about how a reaction mechanism is likely to operate. Comfortable in the knowledge that we will very likely revise our provisional estimate as experimental data comes to light. If, and more generally speaking, when the provisional mechanism is contrary to all of the available evidence, we need to make a revision of that provisional mechanism. So in talking through this, we've already kind of hinted at this idea of developing a reaction mechanism from prior work and evidence. And there's sort of a standard process for this, right? We start with a standard set of mechanisms from prior work. For example, the set of primary photoreactions that we looked at 
in this series of videos. We then use a process of elimination using either theoretical considerations of the molecules in question that would react or experimental data to eliminate many of the steps from our standard set that cannot possibly occur to go from reactants to products. At the end of that process, we end up in one of three situations. We either have no provisional mechanisms, something entirely new, one provisional mechanism, or more than one. And the last case is, is quite common. And so after we've applied this sort of standard protocol to generate provisional mechanisms, let's talk about the three possibilities of where we go from there. Let's start by considering case B, the simplest case where we have one provisional mechanism. We have now established what we might call a plausible mechanism for the process, in that we've ruled out all other alternatives from our standard set based on prior work using existing experimental data. This doesn't mean that it won't be replaced later when new evidence comes to light, but for the time being we have established a plausible mechanism. What if there are no provisional mechanisms, nothing from prior work that relates to this reaction that we're seeing in front of us? Well, in that case, we've of course got to devise a new mechanism employing new elementary steps. And when we do that, we want to repeat the standard protocol, collecting more evidence or thinking through the theory on a deeper level to really establish that the mechanism we've come up with, which is brand new, is actually plausible. And this step is, is commonly skipped. People will often devise new mechanisms without adequate evidence to really describe them as plausible in the sense of ruling out other plausible alternatives. If you have multiples, then it's absolutely necessary to collect new data or theory to rule out as many alternative mechanisms as you can. And it's never possible in general to rule out all possible alternative mechanisms, but we can at least whittle down the list to a manageable one or a small set that are very closely related that we can easily call to mind if needed. And here again, we're going to repeat that standard protocol basically until we get to case B where we have established one plausible mechanism or a small set of very closely related plausible mechanisms. And that's it. This is sort of our general cycle for writing, investigating, and revising reaction mechanisms. It works for photochemical reactions. It works for any chemical reaction, to be honest. But it's particularly important in the photochemical case, as the elementary steps involved tend to be more exotic, as do the structures, the excited state structures. And so there's a pretty significant burden of proof. There's also less work on the standard set than there is in, say, ground state organic chemical mechanisms. And so this work of collecting new data or thinking about theory on a deeper level is very important to establish photochemical reaction mechanisms on a solid footing.